Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we are discussing about cerebellar functions and clinical examination of cerebellar signs. Cerebellum is one important part of the brain and its major functions are maintenance of balance and posture. The cerebellum is important for making postural adjustment to main, maintain the balance. Second important function is coordination of voluntary movements. Most movements are composed in uh, or uh, started from the uh, motor cortex and uh, it, the, uh, uh, the electrical current will be sending to the spinal cord. From spinal cord it will go, go to the muscles. But all these actions are coordinated by cerebellum. So two important functions of cerebellum are maintenance of balance and posture coordination of voluntary movements so whenever the cerebellum cerebellum is abnormal or damaged you can have a defective posture and balance uh, in a human being and in coordination of voluntary movements now we will see what is the blood supply of uh, cerebellum there are three major arteries which supply the cerebellum one is superior cerebellar artery there is a branch of distal basilar artery second one is anterior inferior cerebellar artery or aica it's a branch of the proximal basilar artery third one is posterior inferior cerebellar artery or pica it's a branch of distal vertebral artery so there are three major blood supplies to the uh, cerebellum all are originating from the vertebral basilar circulation so whenever there is a problem in the vertebral uh, basilar circulation cerebellum can be acutely damaged now we will see what are the disorders which can affect the cerebellum. There are acute disorders and chronic disorders. Acute disorder like acute arterial thrombosis, hemorrhages, trauma, encephalitis, um, cerebral abscess, multiple sclerosis can present with uh, multiple time, uh, multiple episodes of cerebellar uh, disease. Alcohol intoxication is one of the commonest uh, cerebellar disorder we see in emergency room. Drugs like phenytoin, that's all uh, phenytoin, barbiturates, streptomycin, so all these things can present with acute cerebellar disorder. Chronic, uh, there are different chronic conditions. Uh, the main chron chronic conditions are degenerative brain disorders, Wilson dis disease, paraneoplastic syndrome, chronic alcoholism, B12 thiamine deficiency, all these th things can pre present with chronic cerebellar disorders. Now we will see what are the clinical findings you see in a patient who is having cerebellar disorder. The most important clinical finding will be ataxia. You ask the patient to stand erect, st stand straight and uh, you ask the patient to close his both feet together and uh, uh, you can see that normal patient, normal person will not fall either side. But a patient who is having cerebellar disorder, he will not be able to close the feet. He may fall to uh, left side or right side in uh, depending on the cerebellar lesion and uh, sometimes he may fall forward or backward if the vermix of the cerebellum is involved or bilateral cerebellar involvement patient can fall to either side or fall uh, forward or backward so at stand ataxia on standing is a, one of the most important clinical finding patient will not be able to stand you should not do a Romberg test for cerebellar sign. That's a sign for posterior column. So Romberg test is not a clinical examination finding in a cerebellar disease. Only just ask the patient to stand straight, open the eyes. Patient may fall to the side of cerebellar disorder or will not be able to do the test at all. So ataxia on standing is the most important clinical finding. Second thing is you ask the patient to walk on a straight line. This is called as tandem walking patient has to walk on a straight line the gait is tested by asking the patient to walk normally and in tandem that means you uh, ask the patient to keep the fo one foot in front of the other foot and continuously walk on the straight line a normal person can walk uh, this uh, tandem walking without falling to either side but a patient who is having cerebellar disorder he will not be able to do this uh, test or sometimes he can fall to either side suppose there is a right side cerebellar lesion patient can fall on the right side and he will not be able to keep the right foot on the straight line so tandem walking is the second important test you you want to know what is a uh, whether the patient has got a gait ataxia or ataxia on walking or not third thing is you ask the patient to talk 
that is called as dysarthria. A patient who is having normal cerebellum will speak without any difficulty, but a patient who is having difficulty, uh, patient who is having cerebellar disorder will have difficulty in uh, talking. Suppose you ask the patient to talk about Madhya Pradesh, he will uh, slowly talk Madhya Pradesh, like that he will talk. So this is called as canning type of speech or staccato speech. So uh, the dysarthria is classically seen in cerebellar disorder, is more, uh, 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 every uh, functions are normal but uh, coordination is not there. So you will not be able to coordinate the talking and it, it will become a uh, uh, dysarthric talk or uh, scanning type of talk or staccato type of uh, speech. So dysarthria is a third important clinical finding seen in uh, cerebellar disorder. Now next thing you have to do is you have to look for nystagmus. For nystagmus what you have to do is a patient will be looking straight on the finger which you are showing in front of the patient. Slowly the finger should move to right side and then left side. Suppose there is a lesion on the right side, right cerebellar lesion, you can see the quick jerk of the nystagmus will be towards the right side and slow drift back to the left side. So nystagmus has got two components, the patient when he is uh, looking uh, uh, the lesion side, he will have a quick jerk, that quick jerk is the, there on which side, that side is the lesion. Suppose that uh, in this picture you can see right sided cerebellar lesion, patient is uh, having nystagmoid jerk like quick uh, jerks are on looking on the right side, so patient has got a right sided lesion. So the fourth clinical finding in a patient who is having cerebellar disorder will be ha uh, having horizontal nystagmus on the side of the lesion. Now the fifth sign of the cerebellar disorder is hypotonia. Normally when you examine the tone you get a normotonia in upper motor neuron type of lesion you get a exaggerated tone you get you can tell it as hypertonia in a lower motor neuron type of the lesion you can get a uh, hypotonic uh, uh, examination finding on muscle tone. But in cerebellar disorder also you can get hypotonia. So whenever you examine the tone of the muscle, suppose there is a right sided cerebellar disorder, uh, all the right uh, group of muscle, right biceps, triceps, supinator, uh, knee, ankle, everywhere when you examine you get a lower tone. This hypotonia is a classical finding seen in LMN lesion but you can also get the hypotonia in a cerebellar disorder. The sixth sign of the uh, cerebellar disorder is intentional tremor. You can ask the patient to take a glass of water. Normally in a normal person you, without any difficulty he will be able to take the glass. But in a patient who is having cerebellar disorder he will have intentional tremor. At the near the object the patient will not be able to touch the object. The same finding you can see in the finger nose test also. I will explain how, do, how we do finger nose test. But to uh, demonstrate a finger nose test, yes, demonstrate a inten, inten, intention tremor, the easiest way is to ask the patient to take a glass of water and ask the patient to take that. Patient will not be able to do that without proper, uh, 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 proper coordination. So that is a classical example of intention tremor. You can do the same test more precisely. You can ask the patient to do a finger nose test. For that uh, patient has to uh, uh, touch the nose uh, alternatively, touch and take out the hand uh, uh, finger from there and again touch uh, with both the hands. You, you have to touch the uh, finger nose test by both the hands. So repeatedly patient has to touch the nose and take the hand out. This should be repeated continuously for both the hands. If both are okay, that, that is normal. Suppose one side is unable to touch the nose, uh, that is called as dysmetria or dysenergia. So both uh, words can be used for incoordination. So ask the patient to take a glass of water, he will not be able to do that. Ask the patient to do finger nose test, he will not be able to do it properly. The second test uh, in the finger nose test is what you can do is finger finger nose test. That means the you examiner will keep the finger in front of the patient then ask the patient to touch the finger and touch the nose alternatively. 
the examiner has to move his finger so according to the moment patient has to touch the finger and again nose this is called as finger finger nose test finger finger nose test here also patient will not be able to do it properly suppose there is a right sided lesion in the cerebellum patient will not be able to do this finger nose test or finger finger nose test properly now the uh, next test is uh, for same function you can do heel shin test you ask the patient to uh, on supine posture ask, ask the patient to lift one leg and place the uh, leg on the heel of the uh, uh, heel should be placed on the knee of the opposite leg and ask the patient to move down the uh, leg if the patient is fully normal he will be able to do that suppose there is a lesion on the right side he cannot be uh, he cannot do the test on the right leg if there is a lesion at the left side he will not be able to do it on the left side now the uh, next test is dis diadochokinesia diadochokinesia means normally a person can uh, do alternative uh, movement on the upper limb like hand can be uh, move up and down uh, normally but in this diadochokinesia patient is unable to do this rapid alternating movements that means pronation and supination of hand uh, on that side is not possible he'll do make lot of mistakes while doing this test this is called as dis diadochokinesia in a normal person he'll be doing it without any difficulty pronation and supination can be done without any difficulty but in a person who is having cerebellar disorder on right side will not be able to do that this is called as dis diadochokinesia the next test is pendular knee jerk you ask the patient to sit on the edge of the bed and you do the knee jerk normally normally when you do knee jerk you can see in a normal person up to three swings are normal the leg may move forward and backward up to three times three oscillations are normal but if the oscillations are increased in number that is because of hypotonia it oscillates more than three numbers you have to think about a, a hypotonia and cerebellar lesion on the that side so pendular knee jerk is a, another clinical examination finding for uh, cerebellar disorder the next test what you can do is rebound phenomena there is a check reflex for every one of us whenever there is something coming towards our face we try to block it the muscle itself will try to hold it so in rebound phenomena you hold the patient's forearm ask the patient to flex the elbow forcefully guard the face remember you have to guard the face because uh, most of the patients who is having cerebellar disorder the hand may go and hit on the face of the patient guard the face of the patient with examiner's other hand and suddenly release the arm if the patient has got a cerebellar disorder he will not be able to control his hand the check reflex is not there and it may go and hit over the face of the patient so check reflex is most important function of the cerebellum but that is damaged when the cerebellum is damaged you don't have check reflex patient's hand will go and hit on the face of the patient so that uh, that uh, that the face should be patient has to or examiner has to cover the patient face otherwise the hand may go and hit on the face so we have discussed about cerebellar functions and cerebellar signs the most important problem of cerebellar disease is in coordination so all this test will tell you whether which side of the cerebellum is involved the peculiar function of cerebellum is it is it, it the whenever there is a problem on the right side cerebellar disorder it will uh, all the problems are on the right side whenever there is a left side cerebellar problem all the problems are on the left side or whenever there is a bilateral involvement or vermings involvement bilateral findings are possible thank you